first answer to the question is become less vulnerable, right? And so I mentioned that you know, before glyphosate hits the system and does damage, you need vulnerability. And that vulnerability is through a loss of the microbiome or a loss of bacteria and fungi and all the good stuff. That loss, unfortunately, is partly from glyphosate, but it's also from our lifestyle. So step one is get that ecosystem back in your body. And so how do you do that? Number one, think about your day. If your day looks something like wake up six o'clock in the morning, run into the same kitchen you go to every day, prepare the same few bites of food, maybe the same smoothie, get those down, or you just run out the door with a granola bar, same one that you eat every day. You eat that in a car that's off-gassing plastics all the way to the office where you sit in traffic for an hour and a half and exhaust uh, ridden highway and then you get to an office, you might track 20, 30 steps from car to office and you sit in a cubicle all day. And then you reverse that pattern back to your TV on the couch in the same drywall box you woke up on. What I just described is you know, the lifestyle of 80 to 90% of working America. And we wonder why we are so vulnerable. Why are we so sick all the time? And the answer is our terrain is awful because our microbiome is gonna mimic our macro ecosystem or our macro environment. If your macro environment is so predictable and is so separated from nature, there's no way you're gonna have a strong defense on the, in that microbiome environment. So step one is at very least become one of those weekend warriors where you're out on your mountain bike every weekend or you're you know, hiking some trail up in the mountains or you're out on your surfboard. You've got to get back out in nature on a very routine basis. It's remarkable how little it takes to re-engage. One of my favorite things is to tell people just to start to weed again. And maybe you don't have a garden, but if you live in an apartment and you go out and your walkway's got gravel on both sides of it, we'll start picking the little weeds before there. You don't have to wait for the landscaping guy to come around every Thursday to wipe those things out with some more ground up. Start plucking those things out of, the, out of there and you're gonna get something interesting is that every time you pluck a weed, there's a little plume of microbiome that'll come up out of the soil. If you've leaned down and you're engaging with that weed, you've just introduced, at very least, bacteria, fungi, and some helpful stuff to your skin, which can then slowly repopulate your body. If you, often, if you also happen to be breathing at the same time, you'll do the, perhaps the most important thing is you'll reseed the nasal sinuses and the upper respiratory tract with some of these critical bacteria from your environment. So maybe it's as simple as start promising that you'll, you'll touch a few plants between your front door and your car. And then when you get off of work, if you could do something phenomenal, take off your shoes. Maybe there's a little park on the way home or over by the office, or maybe it's by your home. Stop at a park or stop by some green space and take off your shoes and socks and get your toes in the grass. If your feet can touch the ground for just a few minutes, A, you're gonna create a Faraday cage at the skin level. You're gonna take a blessed few minutes where your body's not getting pummeled with electromagnetic field from the Wi-Fi systems and everything else. You're gonna go back to some original math or frequency resonance in your body, and the microbiome is gonna enter through all kinds of different mechanisms at that point. You've got it touching the skin, you're getting microbiome literally through the skin, into the skin pores of your feet. Grass just feels good between your toes too. If you haven't felt that in a while, it's kind of youthifying right there. You wanna feel like a kid, take off your shoes, run across the park at high speed, or if you haven't done that in a while, maybe a slower speed, but pick something you're not gonna injure yourself at and you'll start repairing faster. So just to back. clarify, I love that you're the first thing you're saying for how people can get healthier is increase their connection with an evolutionary environment. But most people can't find anything that's even close to an evolutionary environment by where they live. They don't live in the Vilcabamba Valley. So if they go to the park and they put their feet in the grass, that grass is sprayed with glyphosate for killing the weeds that are in there. Is it still net positive? It is, yeah. I, I think it's totally net positive. I think any time you engage, even with a, even with a trace micro ecosystem, you, you win. And one of the reasons I'm so convinced of this is the dogs. Like, do I've seen my patients go from, you know, who are on death's bed, literally, with chemotherapy destroyed bodies, sterile gut. They actually are passing white chalk stools, no bacteria in the gut. We put them on the supplement from ancient soil that's still sterile, but then their dog comes in and their dog will repopulate their gut in just a few days as long as there's some substrate for that bacteria to grab onto. And so I've seen animals just bringing enough microbiome from the backyard, which is not necessarily a normal paleo man kind of ecosystem. It's 
a suburban lawn in the middle of fake everything, and yet there's enough microbiome there to get a gut repopulated and take somebody from sterile stools to normal bowel movements in a, in a week. So it doesn't take much to get us moving in the right direction. And again, it's because the microbiome is so freaking abundant. Even though we've destroy, destroyed a vast amount of it, there's so much of it. It's literally like everything around us. We are basically being squeezed in and filled with microbiome all the time if we just give it a chance. And so we got to give it that little window. To watch the full episode or to subscribe to the podcast, click the link in the description or visit us at neurohacker.com slash collective insights.